Remember the passion you felt doing that particular thing you always loved to do when you were a kid? Whether it was to laugh or to love or to explore, to play or create. Those passions weren't just you being a kid. They were gifts of clarity. They're the desires of your heart authentically expressed. Hi, I'm Courtney Cole, and this is the Love Freak Podcast, where we remember who we really are and what we've come to this planet to create. It's here we make a choice, love or fear. It's here we choose to vibrationally realign ourselves with the truth of our essence, love. 528 hertz, the love frequency, which therefore allows us to realign with conscious healing, authenticity, and creativity. Don't freak out. This is your true nature. Hey guys, welcome to this special holiday edition of the Love Freak Podcast. Christmas is this week. Can you believe that? Because I can't believe that. It's weird because as much as I feel like Christmas 2019 was just yesterday, it also feels like it was a century ago. But this year's just been nuts, to say the least. So it's just felt like it's last in eternity. But I don't know what your Christmas is looking like this year, whether you're able to see your family or if you've chosen to keep your distance. Um, but wherever you are, I hope that you are staying safe and healthy and ultimately happy. Uh, I am I am such a Christmas fan. I love the lights. I love the cheer. I love the chill in the air. I love the trees. <laughs> I love the decorations and the food and the time with family. But most of all, and don't judge me, but I love Christmas for the sentiment of gift giving. And today's episode is all about a gift that I would wish for you. Um, not one of, of monetary value, but one of of spiritual enlightenment and realignment with your divine nature. And it's a gift that's not only for yourself, but one that spills out over every aspect of your being and gifts others with a higher state of awareness. As much as I grew up, you know, learning that Christmas is way more than just gifts, I just, I really think that it's one of the most important aspects of Christmas because I feel like, I feel like Christmas is commemorative of a time when we were given one of the greatest gifts we could have ever received as beings of consciousness. Uh, so it's not the TVs, it's not the toys, and it's not the commercialization of it all. But it's the ultimate gift of, of kind of a roadmap, an example of, of who and what we're all capable of when we live in alignment with divine love. It's a new way of thinking and, and being that gifts us the opportunity to live a life of service and to love people in greater depth by aligning with the truest, most authentic expression of ourselves. And I'm talking about Jesus. I'm, I'm, and whether you're a Christian or not, whether you believe he's the son of God or just a prophet, I think we can all agree that Jesus was a pretty rad guy. Right. After all these years, like he still has people talking about all the cool things he did. OK, you got to give him credit for that. He is a man who truly figured out this 528 love frequency lifestyle. And if you're not a Christian and you're about to hit the stop button on this podcast because that just turns you off completely. I'm I'm just asking you to hold up for one second. So don't let me scare you. OK, I'm not not trying to convert you into any religion or make you change anything about where you are right now. But, you know, even if you are a Christian, I I think it's good for all of us to kind of meet in this place right now where there's no limit, there's no boundary, nothing. There's no boxes, there's no right, there's no wrong. There kind of just is. And and then you can kind of choose in that space where you reside. That's the space that I kind of want to create right now. Um, But in the Christian tradition, you know, Christmas is all about the birth of Jesus. Whether you celebrate that view or not, the fundamental reason for Christmas was kind of predicated upon that story, right? But no matter what you believe, Jesus has an important story to share. His message was important. It is important. 
I grew up in the Christian religion and, and though I don't particularly choose to associate myself with any religion anymore, I'm a big fan of who Jesus was as a person. More so than anything, I'm a big fan of the Christ consciousness, which is that mentality that Jesus chose to pursue. It's that the channeling of that divine consciousness that we all have access to. And and this is the gift that I'm talking about. Jesus and his example and my very humble opinion gives each and every one of us with this example of aligning with pure, authentic love. That is all things. That's not separate from anything. And it's the very truth of our being. It's our It's our divine nature. And he is the example of what aligning with this higher state of consciousness or frequency looks like. And his example of how to achieve that state of consciousness, it really is the ultimate gift. And it, it saves us from ourselves um, and from living in duality with the ultimate oneness. So what is consciousness? What is consciousness? We know that consciousness is about being aware, right? It's our level of awareness. And oh my gosh, I know I've mentioned this book a trillion times, but The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. It's seriously so good, you guys. If you haven't read it, you need to go read it. I think you can actually get the link on my website for the book if you want to go buy it. And if you're looking for a last minute Christmas gift, this is the one. This is what you need to buy somebody because it just it's like a gift of freedom. Trust me on this. But I love it so much because he explores consciousness quite brilliantly, in my opinion, where he really questions like what are thoughts and who is the one experiencing thoughts? And it's kind of a weird, heady thing to think about that. And you're probably like, well, what do you mean? Like, I'm the one experiencing my thoughts. And I and I get that. But he goes further to ask, but who are you? Who's the one experiencing those thoughts? And some might say, well, I'm Betty. I'm Betty. I'm the one experiencing my thoughts. But who makes up Betty? Like who are who is behind your beautiful eyeballs experiencing everything before you? What is that energy or that force that's keeping you aware And that's consciousness or that's what he says is the ultimate observer. And Michael mentions in one part of his book that the observer, the one who sees is equivalent to kind of what it would be like if you were sitting in a movie theater watching a movie. When you're in a movie theater watching a film, you aren't in the actual hustle and bustle of it all. You're just kind of experiencing it, right? You're watching someone else experience their experience. You see everything for what it is and you're just observing it. You're not fully attached to it on every single sensory level. And when you tap into your ultimate observer, when you step back from your thoughts and attachments, you can just watch you experiencing your experience. At that point, you're just pure awareness, your pure consciousness and the life, everything that's happening around you including your thoughts, everything going on in your head is just what you're observing. So try doing this for a second. Just just try sitting back in that observer seat where you aren't attached to anything. You're just purely experiencing your awareness. Just close your eyes and just watch. Watch the darkness from your eyes being shut. Notice the feelings that it makes you feel. Experience your thoughts. Just notice yourself thinking. You don't have to grab hold of those thoughts. Just notice them and let them pass. Just sit there for a second. Isn't that a freeing place to just be aware? To watch your thoughts like words on a marquee sign that just kind of pass mindlessly if you let them. 
And to know that you are in a place of complete control to whether or not you want to grab hold of any of those thoughts or emotions. Isn't that awesome? The ultimate observer that is your awareness truly has the best seat in the house and is a very, very powerful seat. It is in full control. And and, and speaking of gift giving, what a gift it is to give yourself this moment of mindfulness because this is true meditation when you can sit back and detach from your thoughts and just be in that seat of the ultimate observer. So consciousness is awareness and your awareness is ever evolving and expanding. So if consciousness is awareness, then what is the Christ consciousness and how do we shift to it? Well, that is a great question. And before I go any further with our chat today, I just want to make sure that it's very clear that I do not think that I have all of the answers here. I am such a journeyer when it comes to this stuff. So I feel like, you know, my my words are just my words and my experiences are just my experiences and they might not be yours. So I would definitely say that it is important for you to make your own assumptions and to have your own experiences with this conversation and ultimately decide for yourself what's right for you. Um, but I've definitely asked a lot of questions of people that I love and respect on this topic because uh, I just think it's really important. And, uh, you know, I'm a creative, you're a creative, we're all creatives in our own right. And this is how we align with our true creativity in order to live our truest expression of ourselves so that we can live our fullest potential and be all that we are made to be. So it's so important to me. Um, And so if you want to know more about the Christ consciousness on a deeper level from people who know far more than I do, there's a couple of different episodes where you can do that. But probably the most specific would be episode 21 with Paul Selig. Uh, And if you haven't read any of his books, you need to do that. He talks a lot about the Christ consciousness. Uh, But definitely check out our conversation in episode 21. But in simple terms... I'm what I'm coming to know the Christ consciousness to be is the awareness or the realization and the ultimate embodiment of divine love. Well, if that's the case, okay, then what's divine love? And how is divine love different from the personified version of love that we kind of experience every day? And if I had to guess, I would imagine that one of the main reasons that we're so love starved as a culture today is because none of us really know what love truly is. If we really did, if we really knew what love is and how it really works, I would imagine that we'd all be living it and that our world would probably be looking a lot different today. (laughs) But instead, I think that we've kind of learned these ways of being like when we get so caught up in our experiences and our traumas and these egoic mentalities and we've created these religions and rules um, in pursuit of what love is and that have really only kind of confused its meaning in a lot of ways. And we have our limitations that we've created to protect us and the paradigms that we hold on to that kind of keep us comfortable in our limitation. And it's all keeping us separate from ever fully receiving and understanding what love really is. We are so ruled by our undisciplined minds that are kind of going back and forth between being conscious and then we have these subconscious reactions to our thoughts and emotions and our society kind of takes full advantage of this by selling us products and experiences that only exasperate this way of of thinking of keeping us in this limitation and from the truth of what love really is and we see the consequences of, of all of that uh, with the overwhelming conflict that exists in our world today. So what is divine love? Ugh, goodness, that is a big question. And divine love to me right now is the realization 
and the authentic expression of all things as that of the divine source. So the true realization of all things in its authentic, pure form beyond any ideals or limitations, um, all that in union with the ultimate oneness. It's seeing everything as complete and whole. Seeing everything in its divinity, even if in this dimension it hasn't been actualized as that. (laughs) It's realizing that on a greater spiritual plane that everything is whole and complete. And and this love is is founded in, in joy, pure joy and creativity and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and acceptance and grace and honor and wonder and authenticity. Gosh, and the list goes on and on and on. And we experience divine love when we are in tune with its frequency, when we tune into that plane or field where everything is actualized in its wholeness. Just like we tune a musical instrument, we can tune ourselves to and align with this frequency. We experience uh, a divine creativity when we do this. That is a true, magnificent, brilliant, beautiful expression and manifestation of our soul. And aligning with this space just, gosh, it feels so good because... It's who we are on a fundamental level. It's our truth. It's where we come from. It's what we know to be true on that spiritual level. It's the you that exists beyond limitation and the you that lives in possibility. And then you have the more human aspect of love, which I think kind of functions more in a place of separation from that oneness, from the the whole. It's more individualized and it knows itself as separate from. It's more possessive. It's more self-indulging. Think about the love you have in a relationship with another person. Uh, We may actually, you know, love a lot of aspects about someone else. And they might be fun to be around and they might be really freaking awesome. But when you get down to the heart of it, you love that person because of the way they make you feel. Their awesome personality, you know, makes you feel a certain way and you become addicted to it in a sense because of how good it makes you feel. You know, the, maybe the way that they smell, it makes you feel good or makes you feel comfortable or, or reminds you of something that makes you feel comfortable. So, so as much as it's about them, it's about you. We write lists of what we want and we don't want in a person and we seek to have our expectations met and we fight for what we need. And if that person happens to change any aspects of what it is that you want, you might not love them as much or you might change the status of the relationship, right? And it goes beyond just a romantic relationship. Like think about how you were raised you know, maybe if you chose to live a life outside of what your parents expected of you, depending on your parents, obviously, it might affect your relationship with them, right? Their level of love and acceptance towards you is kind of based in your ability to stay within their box, maybe. So Our idea of love has become quite controlling and limiting on so many levels. And that mentality kind of breeds itself over and over again through the generations, kind of bringing us further away from the truth of what love really is. This type of love is centered around a very self-reliant ego. And centered around our own individual desires and boxes that we've created for ourselves. And all of that is just a part of that duality complex that I talk about. That's just, it keeps us separate from staying in full connection with the source of all things that allows us to live our most honest, creative expression of our soul. 
divine love or that oneness that I talk about is literally the opposite of that duality complex. So how do we shift? How do we transform our minds and our spirits from human love to divine love, from worldly consciousness to the Christ consciousness? And how do we not just portray aspects of divine love, but fully embody it? And, you know, I I really think it just all goes back to that awareness that we talked about at the beginning, being able to sit back in that seat of the ultimate observer and detach from every thought that's kind of predicated upon someone else's teaching or detach from our false belief systems that keep us in limitation or detach from our Western culture that tells us what we should or shouldn't believe. And just to be in the awareness of all that is and aware of all the possibilities of that space. Allowing yourself to be in total freedom from any limit, any expectation, any trauma or belief and just find acceptance in that nothingness for a second. In episode 17, uh, I talked to my dear friend, Dean Schlecht, and he talked about the difference in becoming love and aligning with love. And one of the most profound things he explained in that episode was that we can strive to possess, possess qualities of love in the pursuit of becoming love, or we can choose to let love possess us as we let it fully take over our being and there's no striving involved in that at all. So in the acceptance of the nothingness, in that space of just being, let that divine love fill that nothingness with only itself and nothing else. Let that love become you. And that's my wish for you this Christmas. My my wish is the hope that you will give yourself the ultimate gift of a retuning. A retuning of your mind, body, and spirit with this new frequency, this new consciousness that allows you to express yourself in full, in your divinity. That you can be the youest you that you can possibly be, that you can gift others with your service of being so aligned in love that it raises them up in higher consciousness and love. And that you can live a life that is overflowing with true life, with peace and with joy and fulfillment. And let that mentality just rule Every aspect of your being, let it take over every thought, every emotion, and let it align you with your highest potential, your ultimate creativity that is the truest expression of you and your power. And let the divine Christ energy that was born in man so long ago be born in you this Christmas. You know, it says over and over and over again in scripture that the Christ is in each of us. And the Christ is not just the one person that that Jesus was. The Christ is a mentality. It's a consciousness. It's an energy that literally lives in your being waiting to be activated through your choice. And it's so ready and available to express itself as you. And all of your brilliance. You are already whole and complete. Even in the midst of all of the pain. All the suffering. All the dysfunction and crazy and chaos. So align with that space of wholeness. That, that's your birthright. That's your home. That's your truth. This is, is Freedom from the chains that we've kind of let the world attach to us and keep us down. The world needs 
every aspect of you in your full form. I'm going to leave you guys with an amazing quote from Albert Einstein that I find incredibly powerful. It says, A human being is part of the whole called by us universe. We experience ourselves, our thoughts, and our feelings as something separate from the rest. A kind of optical delusion of consciousness. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires and to affection for a few persons nearest to us. Our task must be to free ourselves from the prison by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. The true value of a human being is determined by the measure and the sense in which they have obtained liberation from self. We shall require a substantially new manner of thinking if humanity is to survive so powerful i hope you guys have such a happy holiday and a very very happy new year and uh i think you know it looks like we're gonna take next week off um for the holidays but we will be back on ready to go um the first week of the new year and i so look forward to growing with you and to setting a new precedent of being uh, in the year 2021. It's going to be a good year. It's only can only go up from here, right? So Merry Christmas to you guys and so much love from me to you. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of the Love Freak Podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram at the love freak underscore. Don't forget that's F-R-E-Q. Or to find out more information, you can go to www.thelovefreak.me. Look for a new episode every Tuesday.